grandfather died even before you were born. And um, were you asking your relatives as a child who he was? Were you interested? Or who, who was the one who told you? <coughs> I think you, you can only be interested in that moment if it was placed in the family, but it was a secret in my family. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a child, as an adult, we, we don't uh, have questions about it. It came later on when I was in a boarding school and I had the first contact with, the, with Auschwitz, with the name Auschwitz, uh, with the name of a perpetrator and mass murder and things like that. And this woke up my interest in that stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I started my research. And what was your reaction when you had found out? Uh, like I said before, my, my reaction was uh, in the age of 15 that I quit the contact to my family completely packed my suitcases and moved and never looked back until today. That was the reaction and was the, the consequences, the only uh, uh, standable consequences for me to deal with it. But did you start some research on your own? Were you immediately interested who he was? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's now 30 years that I made a research about him and I not uh, take the research uh, in my own family while I was aware the only thing I will get was lying against me. So better do it my job and I do it a good job and made a research around the family. Yeah, and that was the result ended up in a book 2013, The Heritage of the Commandant. It's the English title for the book. And it shows how, how we have to deal or uh, how I had deal, dealt with, with that issue to be a member of, a, of such a cruelty family history. So at the age of 15, you started to realize you do not want to have anything in common with this right. man, and you denounce his actions. Not yeah. only his actions, I quit the whole line to the whole family of, of hers, like my aunts, uncles, including my own father. And what is the family's approach today? Do they still... Uh, they deny everything until today. And uh, you were talking about boarding school, so did you come across some bullying? Were people recognizing you for your name? Mm, were no. they picking on you? No. In, in that time when I was grow up, when I was born in uh, 1965, it was a secret in whole Germany. Nobody was talking about the Holocaust or the Second World War. It was, uh, I think many people were hunted down by it and said, okay, ooh, it was uh, the dark, the dark side of the Germans. Mm -hmm. So don't talk about it, so we get not blamed for it anymore. So keep it under the carpet. Okay, um, but I read some article about you and there you said that there was some stuff at school and this particular person was picking on you. He recognized you and this was the fact that you started doing your research. But today you've told us something else that you... No, no, it was a, it was a, a journalist mistake. Mm -hmm. It was not a person, it was the gardener. So I made a mistake in the boarding school with my colleagues on the, on the room. We went downstairs on the weekend and stolen food out of the basement. Mm -hmm. We were hungry and the security guys, they caught us when we get out of the basement. So we had to take the consequence, and that means in the boarding school to work for the gardener. That was the baddest job ever you can get in the boarding school. And the gardener, the head of the gardener, was a Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. He was a survivor of Auschwitz, and he was one of the 13 gardeners my grandmother used to build the garden around the villa. Mm -hmm. And when he got the list from the director with the names of the delinquents on it, he saw that name and immediately he went back to the secretary of the director and asked her, can you tell me the name of that uh, boy's father? And he said, yeah, it's Hans Jürgen. And he was, he was so close to the family that he knows the name of the kids. And he, in that moment he was aware that I'm part of that family. So, and then he creates his revenge. So we had the, our consequences had to be to stay two weeks at a gardener in our free time. And I was there for three months. 
So the German teacher went to the director and said, why he is still, uh, so the coincidence were finished two weeks after it, but he is now three months there. Oh, the gardener was uh, talking very bad about Reiner. He uh, didn't make the job very well. He came too late. He not obeys. And exactly what my grandfather said to the Jewish people, to the prisoners. Yeah, so these are the arguments he used against you. Right. It was a fake. It was a lie from his side, but it was the only possibility for him to get his revenge. So to beat me up, to, to make the hell on earth for me. Mm -hmm. So the German teacher took me out of that uh, spinning wheel. And it was the first time that I got the chance to put my foot on a concentration camp. I never had a clue what it means, a concentration camp or a labor camp or things like that. So we went from the boarding school to Dachau. It's one of the lowest camps where everything began. So it's like the, what do you call it, the, the study camp. So I went in and there was a barrack on, on the right side. I don't forget that moment anymore in my life. And I saw all these blocks on the wall where it said, Rudolf Hess later became the worst uh, commandant of the biggest extermination camp in the middle of 20th century, he killed these and these millions. I said, wow. Wait. On on that point, I was, I was first I was shocked. Mm -hmm. So we went back to the boarding school and I called my father and asked him about it. So it creates the first question, is it true what I read there on the block? And he said, no. I said, why? He said, they have a, uh, they made a mistake uh, to spell the name right. It is Hess. I said, oh my goodness, Whew, they made a mistake. I am a lucky person. So then nothing happened until I'm in the age of 15. I came home, so I was uh, beginning to train my job as a chef, as a cook, and saw these books on the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. The commandant of Auschwitz and people at Auschwitz. And I passed by and, and, and I made a step backwards and think, how, how can it be that, and I recognize, my memory works very well, that his, hers, something is wrong. They made a book on the same mistake. They create a book. And I want to grab that book to, to read it. Mm -hmm. Not to read the whole book, only to read the cover if it's yeah. really a mistake. Yeah. And my father, like I said, he came out of his office like a wizard, like boom, slap on my hand and said, these books are nothing for you. I, you have no allowance to read it. And he took the books out and bring it to his, uh, his, his home office. And who was your grandfather for you? How did your father present him to you, to the children? He, he was a soldier. That was the only information I, I had in, in my use. And he was uh, died in the field. So there was nothing that he was a commandant or something like that. He was shot like a million other German soldiers in the field. So he was basically a hero. Yeah. So, but he forgot to tell me that he was the commandant of that extermination camp. And so I got the chance after my father left for a business meeting to Sweden. My mom gave me the books. I read the both books overnight and I was one hand, I was shocked, I was confused, I was hurt. Well, I, and I lost the respect to my father in that moment. Well, he lies. And um, what was the first time you started thinking about visiting Auschwitz? Who you were in it, it was after, after reading the book, The Commandant of Auschwitz. And then I, the first permission to uh, join to, to visit Poland was in 2009. Before it was not allowed for me. I, I didn't get a visa mm -hmm. about the surname. And can you describe your feelings? What were you thinking about the, hem the emotions which were coming to you uh, while <coughs> you were coming through the gate, maybe thinking about your grandfather? It was a, it was a really bad feeling. Well, you get smashed from one side to another. All the emotions, it's, it's like an explosion. You, you have no, no idea how to deal with it, how to come on terms with it. The point of view changed every second. So the only thing I, I cannot do 
until 2009 or whenever I'm in, in Auschwitz, I can touch anything. Maybe it's a little bit like a kind of illness. <laughs> but I will not have in any way any connection to that cruelty guy called my grandfather. I will not have his crimes, the blood he creates on, on, with victims, with, with all that stuff on my fingers. So I put my hand in my pockets in that moment when I pass the gate, that means the entrance of the museum. My hands are the whole time in my pocket. So it seems that people understand you, that they got the message. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, was there some time where you were thinking of giving up, that the people do not, uh, do not realize you are not the same person? Every week. Like <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Every <laughs> week I had that problem. No, it is, it is a, you know, when I'm, I made that job 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. So I have no holidays, I'm traveling, I met survivors, I met uh, other students, I create projects, I be in filmings, so writing, writing books. So I have no time. Sometimes it's, it makes you sick to have ignorance in front of you. Mm -hmm. So to have a, like you have an audience and you have new Nazis in the audience. And they come to deny what happens there. How can they deny things like that? The evidence we have from the past, including the survivors, it, it's unbelievable. The it's bad like situation everything. always I have from the right-wing movements. Mm -hmm. So they, wanna, uh, they would like that I join their party and be like a symbol for the right-wingers. But I said, forget it. Never ever. Yeah, I read somewhere about you that you are strongly against far right parties. You even said, I have the sentence in here somewhere, that all the far right parties are exactly the same as the Nazis. The ideology is the same. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> and uh, I believe you are trying to. What did they do? Warn people uh, yeah. against voting. These Not people. only warn, I fight against these people. Which are basically the same as Nazis. The ideology is the same. Of course. They use the Hitler salute, they use the swastikas in a different way. Well, to use the original swastika uh, brings in conflict with the, with the government, with the police. So they changed a little bit. But the inner circle and all the, the network system knows what it means. So like if you have the, na the number 88, it's Heil Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> it's a synonym for Heil Hitler. So you have to pronounce it outside that the youth know what it means and to be careful to use it. Yeah, so they are just perfectly hidden today. Yeah. <laughs> and now some, something more optimistic <laughs> was or is that someone who has been uh, supporting and encouraging you to do these things? Was there someone who has always been there during your tough times? It was my mentor. It was my first boss when I was a trainee. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a, a product out of a breeder home. In Germany we call them Lebensborn. Mm -hmm. So it was a special, what do you call it, like a, like a experiment home from the SS mm -hmm. to create the next level of Aryans, the perfect Aryans, blonde, blue eyes, fast like a, like a hunting dog, yeah. tough like steel, so the, the, all these mites. And he said, the program completely failed in my way. I said, why, you're blonde, blue? He said, yeah, but I'm a gay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we worked together the last 30 years. So he was of one of my closest friends, and he was one of the person I have 100% trust. And he passed away last, last year. And he was the guy who, who bring me on that way. He said, you have to fight. I'm getting older, other people getting older, but you have to keep up the remembrance, the memory of what happens, what your family, especially your grandfather, did. So that's how I, how I dealt with it. And today you are the only one from your family who spoke up, or did your mother join you? Join my, you? My, my mother has nothing to do with the Hearst family. She only married 
the youngest son of hers. She helps me a lot. Yeah. She's supporting you. And I'm the only one of the whole Hearst family mm -hmm. who not denies the Holocaust, who opens the, the, the Pandora's box. So they still see you as a traitor. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of the famous black sheeps in the world. <laughs> so there is no idea of family Christmas in your family? No. Happy times? No. Nothing like that? No. And I, I don't need it. Why I should uh, stay or uh, uh, stay with, with people who deny such crimes? Mm -hmm. It would make me sick. So better I fight against them. And that's what I said always to the students. I think uh, you have two possibilities. To howl with the wolves or to hunt the wolves. So better hunt the wolves. So thank you so much. Thanks. For your time. You're welcome. <laughs>